Hi, this is Mike Brown, owner of Death Wish Coffee Company. Welcome to Fueled by Deathcast. I love Java, sweet and high. Death Wish Coffee presents Fueled by Deathcast, the world's strongest podcast. With your hosts, the incredible Jeff and the amazing D Man. Welcome to Fueled by Deathcast, everybody. If you cannot tell by my voice and soon to be D Man's voice, one of us might be under the weather very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> oh man, we had a we had a crazy weekend. Um, we went to the Renaissance Fair. We uh, went to a local tattoo shop opening. We had a lot of fun this weekend, but uh, I'm paying for it a little bit to uh, over over throughout the course of this week. I've been paying for it, so uh, as that's the, okay though. As the day gets longer, I'm just slowly getting closer to dying. It's okay though. It's okay. a, yeah, it's great. We we've got the the fueled by death cast to pick us back up. It is true to, to pick us up, brush us off, and send our uh, send us on our way of our caffeinated day. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys are keeping track at home, this is episode ninety four of the podcast. We are slowly but surely making it to that extra special episode one hundred. It's coming up. It's coming. And Zach fucking wild, Zach by the way. Fucking wild guys in, in the flesh. In the flesh. It's gonna be great. But uh, this one's great, too. Uh, we'll get to that in just a few short moments. To start it off, though, I am the Incredible Jeff. And I am the Amazing D-Man. And we'd love it if you followed us over on social media. It's really easy. Uh, our social media of choice is Instagram, but we Facebook and Twitter a little bit as well. I am at Jeff Wish Coffee. And I am at Titus Welliver Official. <laughs> He's on my shirt today. <laughs> um, I love Titus. Uh, I'm uh, at Death Wish Dawson. That's true. That's true. Right, right there. And uh, if you guys are just listening to this on your favorite listening device, whether it's iTunes, um, Google Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, wherever you're finding your podcasts, uh, know that we are also in video format. And uh, this one is no different. You can find the video of this podcast over on the Death Wish Coffee Company YouTube page as well as on Facebook. And no show would be complete without thanking our good friend Brock Powell. Brock Vox. Dot com. He's the voice actor on this show and a thousand voices out there in the world. Make sure you go check him out on his social media. He's always doing something fun, always doing something cool. And like I said, the amount of voices he does, you probably have heard him in something at this point. If if, if not, you're going to by the end of the year. Yeah, you'll hear him in your dreams by <laughs> the end of the year. That is true. I already hear him in my dreams. Just whispering sweet just, nothings. Just whispering sweet nothings. Jeffrey, nothing. I love you. Speaking of dreams, I dream about this show sometimes, not only because I like it, but it consumes my week sometimes, and uh, it's just the love of being a podcaster, and I gotta say, we just missed a special day, the International Podcast Day. Oh, whoa. Um, And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. There was uh, a lot of new podcasts that premiered on that day and a lot of, you know, favorites out there. We've talked about this many times on this show. I want to take a second and throw it out to some of our favorite podcasts out there, friends of the show. But um, if you guys are listening to this show, feel free to write us on social media. Tell us what your favorite podcasts are outside of ours, of course. Of course. Um, my, the one I've been listening to a lot lately, I've been falling back into it, which is uh, really fun, is Dumb People Town by the Sklar Brothers. It's very, very fun. The world is getting dumber, and uh, they have a comedian on every single episode, and they make fun of some really dumb dumb uh, stories out I, there. I, I've, I've listened to that a couple times, actually. Yeah. It's a good one. It is a good one. And I know, without even having to ask you, what, you're, what you've been listening to. Well, I, you know... As always, I'm lis- listening to Rogan. Yes, Joe Rogan. But lately he's been doing something new where he's, um, <laughs> it's kind of like he wants to argue with some of the guests that he has on, but he's not a scientist or a doctor right. or a specialist in anything. He's just kind of, you know, Joe Rogan. Right. So now he's having debates on his podcast, mm. which are like, you know, here's a vegan cardiologist and a paleo enthusiast. Right. And they sit down and they 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 hash it out, and so far it's 
pretty frustrating. I bet. <laughs> I bet. That doesn't sound as fun as just the Joe Rogan experience. But they just keep on citing stuff and getting angry at each other. It's it's pretty wild. Maybe they'll uh, they'll they'll figure that out. You know, it's a new idea for Joe, yes. so maybe he'll figure it out as it goes. Yeah, th- I mean that's how new ideas go. Sometimes it's touch and go. It's how it worked with us. I yeah. mean, when we started sitting down here, this was not the show we started with. Yeah. You have to grow into everything that you do. And we're constantly updating and learning new things and and making this show better for you guys out there as well. I do want to throw out um, some thanks and some love to some of our friends out there in the podcasting world. First and foremost, I want to shout out a shared universe podcast studio. That is Ming Chen and Mike Zapsik from AMC's Comic Book Men. They started their own podcast studio down in Red Bank, New Jersey. You yourself can go if you're in the in the area and book time there to record a podcast. And if you've never even ever recorded a podcast before, you'll have some of the most professional podcasters in the world teaching you the ropes and they have now two they've expanded their studio to two studios in that oh. same building just like when we the last time when we were down there they were saying yeah. they wanted to get that other spot they got that other spot so literally at the same time they can have two shows running simultaneously on, on social media live which is really fun so shout out to Ming and Mike and their own show the Ming and Mike show yay um also, uh, friends of the show, high brothetical thinking. We love those guys. Uh, we met them down at a recent um, Heroes and Villains fan fest. Did you almost say Walker Stalker? No, I almost said fan fest specific. Ah, but uh, but it was a Heroes and Villains fan fest, and a bunch of great guys. They have an incredible show. Always about some weird conspiracy theory, but it gets you thinking, and you really feel like you're part of their conversation, which is a lot of fun. So shout out to them. Obviously, shout out to our good friend Dave Solo, host of not only the Walker Nation podcast, which is about the walking dead and horror and all that kind of stuff, but also the host, the co-host of the Pop 10, where um, right from Universal Studios Orlando every single month, they run down the top 10 most awesome things in pop culture every single month. And uh, he does a really good job with all that kind of stuff. And finally... Friends of the show, friends of Death Wish Coffee, friends of everybody who loves hip hop, Mr. Throwback Back Thursday, Mr. TBT. Go check Ooh, those guys out. You could out. do th- Throwback Thursday and have a podcast all about Bach. Like the like the musician Bach? No, the other Bach. <laughs> there is no other Bach. There could be another Bach. Um, there's only Bosch. There's only- <laughs> we're really we're, we're showing Titus the love today. It's okay. I only have love for Titus. It's true. It's, it's deep true. and it's real. But uh, like I've said a million times, we're so glad that you guys are listening to our podcast, but podcasts are awesome. And for anything that you love out there in the world, there's definitely a show out there probably talking about it and somebody that you might not have even ever heard of talking about that thing that you love. And you can go check them out. So I'm always trying to discover new podcasts. So, you know, I hope you guys are as well. Secret code unlocked. Discount of death. This week until Wednesday, October 10th, you can nail yourself 15% off of the 2018 Death Wish and Valhalla Java ceramic mug on DeathWishCoffee.com. Now, these mugs are always in high demand, yes. and we're always having Deneen make as many as possible, and we can finally run a deal like this because we finally have some extra in the warehouse to sell. So what are we going to do? We're going to sell them, and we're going to sell them to you at a discount, 15% off, if you use the code BOSSCAST. Yes, that's all one word, B-O-S-S-C-A-S-T, BOSSCAST. And once again, that'll get you 15% off of the Death Wish and or Valhalla Java ceramic mug on DeathWishCoffee.com until Wednesday, October 10th. So if you've been holding out or if you already own the mug and you're looking for that awesome present for someone who doesn't have a cool coffee mug, this is the time to get it. 15% off. You're getting a great deal and uh, all week long, guys. And the reason why that secret code is BOSSCAST is because we have the host of a brand new podcast called BOSSCAST on the show this week, John Murray. John Murray is a comedian in the truest form. Is that, of is that him word. there? <laughs> you know what? I never asked. We didn't ask him that. We should have asked him that if, if he actually, that's him in the photo. But I like it. It's the play on the Born in the USA cover from Bruce Springsteen. And that's what the podcast is all about. It's born out of his love of Bruce Springsteen, the music, the message that Bruce brings to what he does. And he wanted to start a conversation with his friends and his, his fellow comedians about Bruce Springsteen and see where those conversations led. In in all honesty, that's the perfect way to start any kind of podcast is you just 
it's freeform conversation and you let it kind of just run. And that's what we did with John. We talked about his career. He started out um, stand up and he moved into, you know, studying and now is a major player in the Upright Citizens Brigade in New York City. And you can see him, I think, every Saturday or every other Saturday. He said he's got a show. He's, he's constantly there. He's constantly doing this podcast. It was a ton of fun to talk to John. And uh, we can't wait for you guys to hear this episode. So mugs up this week for this week's death guest, John Murray of the Boss Cast. The Fueled by Death Guest. So I want to start off, John, by asking you um, all the way back, and I'm always curious talking to comedians. Yeah. What was the spark that got you into comedy? Like before you even maybe thought of, hey, I want to be a comedian. Where where was the beginning of comedy in your life for you? Um, well, you know, uh, my father was a very like naturally uh, funny man. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was very gregarious and, and stuff like that. So he um, he grew up in like he was the first member of his family to go to college and stuff like that. So he had a kind of a lifeline of responsibility. He didn't like have an outlet for the arts uh, growing up. And my mother always theorized that she's like, I think he had an interest and an inkling towards that. So to go in that, that direction. And then this is like, I'm going way back. I'm like going, this feels like I'm going zygote on you guys. Uh, but, uh, yeah. And then my mother's side of her family, she was, they, they were like a very naturally, um, artistic people. Like my, um, my mom's side of the family, like, were all these people that could, like, knit and, and sculpt and draw, like, very easily. But, like, you'd be like, that's amazing. And they'd always kind of, like, get bashful on it. And they'd be like, oh, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. And, like, put these, like, treasures of work away. Like, uh, and I like finding them. Uh, you know, both my parents are gone now. So, and digging this up, I'd be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Um, so there was kind of like an inkling in that on either side. So when I, I ended up to have a personality more like my father and I think my parents kind of fostered it, you know, um, they encouraged me in high school and stuff to get into doing plays and drama and stuff like that. Uh, ended up going to college for that. I went for college for acting and then, you know, comedy kind of, for me in a weird way, was a kind of thing that I kept on shrugging off. Um, people were like, oh, you're really funny. Uh, you should do something with this. And I'd be like, oh, no, you know, I'm an actor or I see myself this way. Um, And then I took my first class in 2004 at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. And then it just it clicked from there. And once that happened, I was like, oh, I I should have been doing this straight out of college, if not sooner. You know, I mean, even just to kind of because like I'm I'm really like an improviser. uh, first and then, you know, everything else kind of after that, um, it's what I've done the most, but even in like high school, people be like, Oh man, come, come do improv for us. And whatever reason I, I short form, not that I have anything against short form. Um, I kind of would, would be like, no. And then, um, yeah, finally, like I listened to everybody. So one time peer pressure worked out. So kids, it works sometimes. <laughs> um, I, I took a class and, and I, I really found my home. So, yeah. That's awesome. And I mean, that's a similar story for a lot of people who who hook up with UCB. It's, right. What an incredible um, entity that it, yeah. UCB is. And it breeds such amazing stuff. And you gravitated towards, um, you know, uh, uh, like um, improv, like you said. Yes. But yeah. you have done, you know, a lot of on camera work um, yes. and, and that kind of thing. Do you like one more than the other? Do you do you, or do you like them both in, in different different ways or? Well, let's let's just get frank, fellas. Uh, on camera work pays a lot better than improv. That's so, true. So, it's true. From that perspective, <laughs> like it a lot more. Uh, yeah, I mean, like on camera stuff, like that's always that's that's always the best. I mean, like you know, just being on a set and stuff like that, that always trumps it. Unbelievable! You're still here. It's still zero 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 to zero. I did it. I spoke. Yeah. Um, improv now at this point, and, and I mean this in the best way possible, is like basically what I do for fun. Um, you know, I'll, like I have three kids now, so uh, I go. I, I am choosing to go out on a Saturday night at nine o'clock to do long form improv. I that is like how I'm going to have fun. That's like instead of meeting uh, a friend at a bar, I'm like, oh, I'll just go and do a show for an hour maybe catch a drink afterwards. Like that's where I, I kind of tell people if they want to see me hang out, like 
come see me at that because that's the night out I'm having for myself. Yeah, cool. So. Um, and for aspiring, you know, people out there, and I like talking to people who are alums of UCB. Like, yeah, what is your your take on how to break into that? Do you just want? Do you want? Do people should they just show up to UCB or should you like like what like how do you how do you break into it? such an amazing institution like that here's here's the deal with it um when i i i moved to the city in 2000 and uh i i like i said to you i like people were like oh go take a class at this place i was like no 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 i i really thought it was this kind of insular like clicky kind of place right um and it's not it's very inviting it's a very um it's very friendly and just like honestly it's a matter of signing up for a class i had never seen a show there before i signed up for a class i just knew what improv was Actually, I take that back. I did see one show uh, at the old space at like uh, 121. At like, um, I, my friend uh, Kurt Brownell had done a show, and uh, I saw that. So that was like really. But I only had seen like one show. I hadn't seen what was regularly running. I hadn't like be like, let me scope this out for a couple of weeks before I did. I literally saw that at the time the artistic director Owen Burke was teaching a class. I was like, well, that's the guy who runs the theater. He must know what he's talking about. Signed up for a class and and went from there. And just kind of like was just like, oh, yeah, like that's how much it all made sense where I was like, oh, yeah, like this feels completely natural. Like I, I, I totally understand what he's saying and what we're supposed to do that it kind of was like, oh, man, this is really like I said, should have been doing a lot. I, I don't mean that in a regretful way, but I just really was like, you know, the thing when you, you discover you're like, why wasn't he doing this like already? Yeah, that's like what it felt like. How do you think that would have went if you did like straight out of straight out of college or even before that went to ucb dude it'd be like tom cruise and me bro okay that's, <laughs> okay? Ah. <laughs> that's, that's what would happen all right uh if a, you know a confident 20 year old 21 year old john murray just uh, unstoppable uh, uh. I, don't, I don't know you know there's there's give and take on it you know there's the aspect of like um you know i i, I went through a lot of this like uh, you know, I was, when I started improv, I think I was already, this is, I, I'm going to sound like an old man, but I think I was already engaged. Like, you know, there was a certain aspects of where I just really showed up for the improv. Like the social stuff was a nice thing to make friends and stuff like that. But I really was just like, I'm here to like do this and do shows. And it's like, so I kind of was able to nerd out on it in a, in a different way, probably than if I just rolled out of school, I would have like, made more of like uh, my general life choices about it and stuff where I was able to be like, no, like it's like, you want to start a team, you want to do what? Like, that's what I'm here for. Let's do more of that. Like, I just want to be improvising all the time. So, I think so. that, that that's a good take on anything that you do. If you're going there for the social event and not the actual act of like yeah. getting into it and nerding out, you're really kind of shorting yourself in the long run. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like, um, I, I, like I, a younger me, um, would not have been able to, untangle those threads so easily you know i think yeah i don't know i it could just be my personality i, I feel like but like one i was just like oh no like i got the the friend thing i've been in the city long enough i got the friend thing set up i like you know it's nice to meet, meet new people and make new friends i wasn't like you know uh cutthroat about it but i definitely was more like i want to be on a herald team if, uh, for people who don't know what that is it's a tuesday night show and i was like i want to get on a weekend team like i i, I just really the structure of the institution itself appealed to me. Awesome. How long before you start to felt, fe how long did it take for you to start <laughs> to feel proficient in, you know, improv comedy? Did, did that, did like you said, it clicked right away, but yeah. how long did it take before you felt comfortable on stage, felt like you were actually being funny? Well, you know, uh, I still feel like it comes and goes, you know, it's like when, as a student, you know, it, it fluctuates, you, you get good at a certain thing and then you're like another aspect of you has to kind of, um, be developed. So you, you'll have moments where you're like really in the pocket and, and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, somewhere it had to be in Herald night where there was, which is like, we do the song form called the Herald that Del Close developed in Chicago that the UCB four brought to New York. Um, you know, it was somewhere in my run on that because I did that from like, did that for like f three or four years uh, before I went and, and, and played on the weekend. And somewhere in there, I, I started to feel like confident that like I could I could make the we can as a group. I don't want to say it myself because this is a collaborative thing, but we can make it work as a group and I could contribute to that 
to, to always have some success in the show and, and know that uh, I wouldn't walk away being like, oh, that was god awful. Like I, 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 I crapped the bed out there. I, I know that I would walk out there being like, definitely something's going to hit tonight and I'm purposely going to do that. And I think then I moved up to the weekend and, and from there, it, that, that feeling kind of only kind of grows. I never walk out in a show being like, mm, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen now. I'm like, I, I feel fairly confident that uh, I will make people laugh and, and they'll walk away having a good time. So um, it's gradual. Like I can't, I, I can't, I feel, Dustin, I feel like I failed you on that question. I can't pinpoint. No, I mean, I, I think what's outlined there with anything you become good at, it's not like you go out there and think, oh, I'm going to crush this. You go yeah. out there and think, well, I've, I've seen it go wrong so many times that right. if, it, if it goes wrong again, I can find my way out and we're going to have a good night. That's totally it. Yeah, that's a that's a great way to sum it up. Yeah, it's like I never like going wrong now to me is exciting. Yeah, it's just like how like how are we going to how are we going to make it work? Right. You know, yeah. and uh, and like you can get still get yourself in some some pretty good holes. But I feel like lately, like it, it's now like 95 percent of the time. We'll, as a team or as a performer myself, we'll dig ourselves out and like land on our feet, and the, the audience will be like, "Wow, you know." Well, I've seen comedy go to the point where people purposely put themselves in the oh, deepest yeah. hole that they possibly can, yeah. just for the fun of finding their way out, or not. You know? Yeah, I knew a guy. I was, I actually, um, I did a, I, I did an AMA yesterday, and I, I told the story. I knew a guy. Uh, who used to purposely write bad stand-up jokes. We used to do an open <laughs> mic together, and he used to write um, like very, like kind of like vaudevillian jokes, but with a modern twist. He'd like kind of update them, and he'd tell them in front of the audience, and he, like audiences would hate him. They like hate him, and that was. A, and I like was like, hey man, you know, you're really kind of like people. I love it, but like you're you're driving people up the wall. <laughs> and he's like, I know, but I was like, I love getting that reaction he's like that's why i keep doing it. crazy <laughs> yeah um where it but like for me like watching that guy and maybe because i had like a, a comedic mindset uh mindset i was like for me i was like i he's like he's winning me over like he's creating a character in a sense yeah where it's like that's that's his bit like he could just like this will be his act and that will become what's humorous about it itself i was like i really thought it was a uh, kind of a smart thing to do i i don't know what happened to him an audience could have killed him i don't <laughs> do you think that was good for you to watch and be like oh yeah i can kind of screw up and i'll be okay if he's if he can make it through that then i can make it through through for something. sure yeah. for sure yeah like that that's great like that's um some of the stuff that i kind of miss because i can't because you know i'm i'm a family man in a sense it's like i don't get out as much as i miss seeing people fail and i mean that in the best possible yeah, sense yeah, you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah. uh because that's where what you're seeing at an open mic or what you're seeing at someone that's trying out a show or even like in an indie improv show is you're just watching people like being like i'm gonna try this and like the thing of it is is that sometimes it doesn't make the ledge and sometimes it does it lands and that's where you're just like oh that's that's awesome to see this happening right now yeah that's really so. cool. And it sounds like, you know, even at this point in your career, you're always learning. You're always, you know, you know, honing your craft. And I think that's yeah. that's important in any aspect of life, but especially in comedy. Yeah. Um, I also kind of wanted to bring this up. I'm seeing in the background you got a, a nice collection of stuff there, including Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, dude. Um, and we had on a comedian um, a couple shows ago, Ken Reed. Okay. And he posed this thought that I love bringing up to other comedians because it's the first time I've ever heard of it, that comedy and horror come from the same place. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that. with that? Do you yeah, I, I, it's um, you, the reaction, like what your, your fight or flight reaction is either to laugh or to scream. That's like our natural, yeah. hmm. that's kind of, that's I read that a while, that's like, from science, that's like from that makes it sound smart. John. No science. Uh, science. <laughs> science. That's no science. No, I read that. That's uh, like a some kind of study I'd read where like that's our natural reaction. So uh, it does ride that fine line. Think about when you see a comedy show. A lot of times, especially if someone's like going blue and really gross. Yeah. The reaction is it's always on that line of like laughter or groaning. Yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of where it does work that same way. It's that kind of same reaction. Uh, so it does tie together where, yes, I'm like Tales from the Crypt or American Werewolf in London, yeah. um, those Shaun of the Dead, those work so well because they kind of correlate it, 
you know, as, as strongly as, as they can. Yeah. Like I think, um, not to nerd out horror wise, I don't know how, but no. you know, I think Landis did a pretty good job with American Wolf of London. He, he did all right with innocent blood. You know, he, he kind of was able to ride, um, that line with it. And, and this show, I mean, I don't know how familiar you guys are with this show, but it's, it's so hokey, but it's great to pop in around Halloween. Cause it kind of rides best. that line. Oh, it's the best. And they did, they do. That's one of the, the, the smartest things about Tales from the Crypt is that it it toes the line perfectly between the absolute horrific yeah. and the most the the joke you never thought possible. Like yeah. that the Crypt Keeper will say. The Crypt say. Keeper was like a horrible <laughs> yeah. comedian, oh, right? He's the best. Always <laughs> in it. Always. Yeah. Always. Crazy. So so good. I, the I, other great thing about Tales from the Crypt is Sam for one second is the the roster of lineup. Like Yeah. It's like Mary Lou Henner, Lou Diamond Phillips, yes. and Burt Reynolds together in this Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, like, and you're like, what? <laughs> okay. Like, wow. They got, like, everybody. It's crazy. I just wonder in, like, the, like, you know, the late 80s, 90s, where it was, like, an agent being like, hey, sit down because I booked you at Tales from the Crypt. Like, yeah. <laughs> huge win. All right. Pop the champagne. Okay. We're well, going HBO. We're going Crypt Keeper, baby. Yeah, that was the thing. It was HBO. Yeah. So it was, yeah. like, a shoe in to your, our comedy special yeah. on HBO. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was You got stuff. Harry, you're going to be working Harry Anderson. You're going to be this close, <laughs> all right? You might be able to meet the creep, Crypt Keeper. Get ready for it. <laughs> oh, my God. You know? Yeah, I, I love that show forever and it's ever. So it's so good. Um, so pivoting over to the also say that there's a like seven seasons of Magnum PI here. I, I have no shame. Oh, I, I was OK. I wasn't going to bring it up, but all right. Just That's say it, guys. We Just didn't want to embarrass you and yeah. bring it up. Hey, man, uh, we're <laughs> be embarrassed about Tom Selleck in the 80s. Come there's on. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. An incredible Hawaiian shirt and a mustache for days. I, I mean, think there's okay. a lot to be embarrassed about there. <laughs> just just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I love it. I love it. There's some good comedy in that show, too, for sure. Oh, <laughs> it's straight <laughs> comedy. What are you talking about? That, like, wait, it's not a comedy? No, it's oh, a man. horror. <laughs> Magnum P.I. is a straight horror. You just were watching it wrong. I was yeah. screaming at it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, man, uh, Dustin, do yourself a favor and, and watch the first three seasons again, pal. I think it will change your mind. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Sounds good. All right. All right. Um, so anyway, I want to pivot on the other side of this and sure. talk about what we're doing right now, podcasting, which yes. is, you know, it's funny. I love talking to people who have gotten into this because I have a similar story from a lot of people where a few years ago I wasn't even listening to podcasts, right. let alone hosting a podcast. Yeah. Um, what got you into thinking I'm going to start a podcast? Is this your first podcast, Bosscast? This is my first podcast. Wow. So, what, nice. so what got you going into doing that? Um, very much like you. Um, I don't know. I, I just was like, I, I, I don't. I feel like I've I've had friends that that had had one, mm -hmm. and then um, and I was like, oh, that that seems interesting. And I have a habit of um, like it's, it's once again people telling me things. I have a lot of friends who always be like, oh, you're so good at interviewing people. You're like, you're so good. Like I love like it's like I, you were good. Like when we do at the top of a show, like we do an audience interview, and or if, you know we can do one on ones. People are always like, you're so good at that. You're so personable. It's like you really bring stuff out of people. So I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, I wonder if I can have something to talk about uh, and just where I can riff with people and, and just do that and, and see how it goes. So I had this former student of mine who, who started this network, this the Brain Machine Network. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just was like, oh, well, maybe I know he does podcasts. I'll just have him do the technical stuff and, and I'll just give this a whirl. I'll see if he's game for it. And he was like, yeah. He's like, this sounds great. He's like, I'd love to work with you. My friend, my producer, Leif and Oxen. So I was like, cool. So I, I just I just did it. I did it on a whim. I really did it in a sense of, and I don't know how, I mean, you guys did it, but I was like, I just want it. This was like, a, like I'll just gonna have to be a little bit of a passion project. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care. Like, um, I made a web series uh, with a buddy of mine uh, named Jeff Garlock. Mm -hmm. And we made that uh, and wanted, and had with the intention of like, we're gonna make this web series and we're going to sell it and, yeah. and we're going to see how far we can take it. And, mm -hmm. and we sold it to IFC and they, they put it up on their website and stuff like that. And we we're like, yeah, you know, we, we did what we wanted with this. I had no plans. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any of that. I'm just like, I'm just going to sit down and talk to people about uh, Bruce Springsteen um, and just keep recording it because I find it fun. Yeah. And I think. And Honestly, that is, and we've said this before on our show too. If you're gonna get into the world of podcasting, that is the absolute best way to yeah. do it 
because if you go, I, if you go and like, I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to be the next Joe Rogan. You're not. No, you're, you're going to be the next asshole. Yeah, you're going to be <laughs> yes. the next asshole. A, a good podcast, a good conversation, a good you know form of entertainment is just coming from a passion project. It's something right. that you, the host. Sp- specifically believe in want to talk about and then that makes it fun for the listener to be part of the conversation right yeah that's that's totally it where we like i don't i know i don't know how you guys work but like i don't care about like running times Mm -hmm. i'm very like i just don't i just really leave it like this is just a a private conversation caught between two people and it's like if you want to lock in and hear that and become part of that you can right um my friend connor ratlitz was like takes that to the extreme him and his friend uh, jd yamato do a 12-hour podcast Holy where mo- they yeah they just go up but he's he's people listen yeah and he's like what's crazy about people listening to that one is like they'll come up to connor and they'll uh act like they know him because yeah. they've spent they've listened to him for 12 hours they'll pick up mid-conversation with him and connor will have to be like why are they acting so familiar with me? And it's like, oh, they, they listened to me sleep on a plane one time because <laughs> I kept recording on the podcast. Oh, so, wow. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. for Dustin and I and maybe some of our listeners as well, mm. ex- explain to us why Bruce Springsteen. Like, I'm not saying that we're not fans. I'm but, not a yeah. fan. But, okay, no, you're, you're not specifically a not a fan? I'm, I'm throwing it out there. Right, not a right. fan. I'm not, not that I, like, hate him or anything. It's just, like, somebody puts on Bruce Springsteen. I'm not listening. Okay, okay. Listen. okay. I'll listen. No offense. Is, I'll does, listen. Is that, any, is that any album, or is that across the board? I wouldn't even know. Okay, oh. Right. So, yeah, so, so, why, so why, why do you think that this is such a great topic to talk about? Okay, Convince us. <laughs> it, it, it's a personal thing. Um, one, I'm from uh, Colts Neck, New Jersey. I mean, mm. That's where I grew up. Um, so that kind of, uh, as to use a pun, is the tie that binds right there. So uh, that's the, that's where... The uh, Springsteen um, wrote Nebraska and and born in the USA, mm-hmm. and it's where he currently resides now. Yep. So there's already like a hometown kind of thing. Uh, two, um, my father died in September 11th. He died in Tower Two. Oh, uh, that. So um, with that, like at the time, like Springsteen was always my my folks were fans of Springsteen mm-hmm. and. It was that weird thing, and I, I, I've talked to this about some people. Some people are like, no, I, I, I love my parents. I don't understand what you're talking about. And other people are like, oh, I get it. But it was that thing of like, can I like what my parents like? I had that kind of struggle right. with it a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. And I eventually found that I was like, yeah, like I do like him on my own terms, and my parents like him, and it's something we can have in common. So that was kind of developing before my father died. We were kind of getting in, in building that like fandom together. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he passed. He died uh, tragically. And then um, – Here's what's crazy. My my first Springsteen show was at the Asbury Park uh, Convention Hall. Mm -hmm. And I got to go to that show. It was a Christmas show. And I got to go to that show because they invited victims of September 11th. So a lot of people, like, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I didn't feel like a lot of times you'd you'd see people on the TV and the news um, being like, oh, I want to, you know, reach out and the victims and I want to like help people. But like that was um, like he did that in a way to me that was uh, like personal. He, he, he did reach out. He made that happen. Yeah. So that was the, the first show I saw and it was like, uh, like December of Oh one. That was like, you know what, three or four months after. Yeah. And um, this already, like this was already kind of a growing thing as I was, you know, I was 21 when my dad died. So I was already kind of, coming to terms with being from New Jersey. I, I don't know where you guys are from, but that can be a thing sometimes for some people. I think it was a little bit for me. Mm-hmm. I was kind of getting at ease with that and, uh, and like kind of being like, Oh, like he's one of the, he's one of the really good parts I enjoy about it. And then that kind of just locked and, and sealed the deal. And it kind of went from there and, and stuff like that. So it kind of built and he's just kind of, and I, and I like just on the basis, I like his music. I like, I like, uh, I, I tend to gravitate toward like, old man singing about sad things kind of music so <laughs> kind of fit the parameters and so you create this podcast boss yeah. cast um and like you said it's basically just a private conversation about mm-hmm. bruce springsteen but are you coming at it from a comedic standpoint i know you've gotten some 
some um, comedians as guests on there. Yeah, we joke that it's like uh, like the most insincere people talking about the most sincere musician. Ah, <laughs> I like love it. it. So it is like a thing where, you know, it's it, it, it is like, you know, we usually start it's similar to you guys. We start about the person and then we kind of get into their fandom and, and their story and how it relates to, to, to the boss. And, and a lot of the stories are similar to mine. They all kind of run deeper. My my producer was like, he's like, we started this podcast. Like, I didn't realize like these stories would get so personal so quick. They're like oh, usually generally about people's parents or about their family dynamic or about how they grew up and, and how like that music kind of tied into it. Um, but yeah, we, we kind of start, so it's, it's funny, but there'll probably be like we, one or two moments where, uh, you know, you'll be like, suddenly you'll be like, Oh yeah, this, we're two comedians like really kind of laying into it a little bit. So that's awesome. I mean, and I think that's such a refreshing take on something because yeah. y- you know, you're coming at it from a very real perspective a very, right. a very passionate perspective and you're getting things that are surprising. I think, you know, as someone like Dustin or myself who's listening to your show, it right. could it could sway our opinions, you know, on 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 Bruce and the the music. <laughs> Dustin I'm says seeing Dustin no. right there. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, Can I, I just think... ask like, what kind of music do you do you like? Just to uh, imagine you were like just deep jazz, John. Deep jazz. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty spread out. And okay. it's, I feel like my music taste is pretty random. It is pretty random. Um, I mean, I'm a lover of rock and roll, though. Right. It'll always come down to those big rock and roll performances, like emotion and just epicness is usually what i look for i, I think you're describing springsteen oh am i <laughs> much did, yeah, oh you know. am i <laughs> <laughs> well maybe okay let's say i i am who i am we are saying I that right yeah yeah, <laughs> you're <Dustin>. yeah. <laughs> if there were three bruce spring songs uh, i can't even say I his name say, yeah, that's how my <laughs> springsteen <laughs> <laughs> if there were three songs i needed to listen to what three songs would would those be or oh, should, is there an album Three should... songs, Jesus, man, that's like that's a ton of pressure. I would say like, well, I mean, like if you want, like, there's a song, there's a, a parody song out there called uh, "Every Hipster Loves Nebraska." Uh, uh, it's I, some I have to I have to look it up because it's really funny. But this guy wrote a song about that. That is like a really great way for to come in at it because that is just like the best uh, album that he made in a house by himself on a four track recorder. Yep. Uh, those are all very sad kind of uh, like uh, ghostly like songs. So that's, that's one way where you that's, that's the seriousness of it. Um, after that, it, it just depends. Like, I mean, like I feel like you and I just need to hang out and then like, I'll b- put on a whole bunch of different songs. <laughs> I don't like this idea. I love it. I love <laughs> hey, this come idea. Come on up. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> spend a couple of days. Okay. I love it. I love it. Ugh. What, um, what are your plans for the podcast? The podcast is, is, is virtually brand new in the, in yes. the realm of podcasts. Yes. Um, do you, do you have plans to do this for, Years and years. Do you want to? Um, do you want to get Bruce on it at one point? Like, what are you? Uh, what are your plans for the show? Uh, no, uh, I look at it is that I want to only. I I don't plan to ever have Bruce Springsteen on it. I <laughs> I think the last thing he would probably want to do is be on a co- podcast dedicated to him <laughs> about himself. Uh, I might as well be like uh, wearing a mask of him as well as I interview him. <laughs> okay. I'd advise uh, against that, but oh, you think that's a bad idea? Hmm. <laughs> you could go the Chris so, Farley route. Like, do you remember when you were born yeah, exactly. in the USA? That's what it would be. It was a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> for me, it's all about like the fan community. Like, I, I want, I, I like tackling the fandom. Mm-hmm. So for me, like, it's just getting, uh, it's uh, like there's to me there's like little kind of so, there's not little there's just like celebrities in the sense of the fan community. You know, there there's like. Um, there's a great fan site called backstreets.com mm. and they are always up and in news informed about what's going on with him. Like if they're, they're always like, if there's a rumor, they'll have the answer if it's true or false, like pretty, pretty quickly about what's going to happen. Like for me, it's like, I want to get someone from that, that website and interview them. You know, I, I want to tackle the, the Springsteen fandom community more than him and his organization himself. You know, it's like, um, mm. Because it, it would just be so weird to, to be like, uh, and how is it to like get up in the morning? You know, that's not what people, <laughs> that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in people's story about the, themselves and how his music affects them and what they do. That's really, really cool. So, that's yeah. cool. I want to roll back a little bit. Yes, um, sir. 
how awesome i mean that that september 11th show that he did that must yeah. have been breathtaking that must have been amazing it was great it was cool it was like um who was there um bruce hornsby was there uh max weinberg seven because i think he still was he was still doing music for conan then mm-hmm. right yeah um Southside Johnny, which if you're familiar with yeah. Shore Music, huge. Uh, like, you know, Lil Steven produced them and stuff like that. Yeah, the whole band was there. I think this is, once again, dating. I don't think Lil Steven was there because I think he was shooting The Sopranos. Oh, right. So, um, yeah, and so it was just, like, crazy. I mean, I've seen two shows in the Asbury Park Convention Hall. I saw that show, and then I saw a rehearsal show for the Working on a Dream Tour, which was equally kind of cool. Because I, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Asbury Convention Hall. It's like right on the beach. It's kind of looks like, um, like a like a kind of like it's a building that kind of resembles a high school mm-hmm. a little bit. I don't know how else to put it. Um, it's a very small, intimate venue, and um, so yeah, that that show like they play Christmas songs. The first show, the the O one show, they played Christmas songs, a variance of that, and then they um, they did some of his songs and. Like I saw Rosalita that night for the first time. That was mine, you know. And then like I got to hear like the age of the innocence. Like I was like, oh yeah, Bruce Hornsby's pretty good, man. I forgot about this. <laughs> I was like, cool that he's here. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. And then the other show that I saw, the, the rehearsal show, I thought was great too. They the way they did that is they set up the stage. They take up like the pretty much the whole back wall of the convention center and set up an arena type stage in this tiny venue wow so it's like um imagine being at like a uh, like i guess to compare it to newer places like a something smaller like maybe irving plaza but smaller and then but have this giant stage jutting out at you wow um and then they just ran through what they would do and it was the first night and critically that show got like maligned and i guess the next night he like tweaked it and tightened it up but i, I was like i couldn't tell i loved it oh, i was like huh. this is amazing to see these guys trying to figure this out that's so, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What a, what an experience for sure. Yeah. And speaking on experience, the question that we come to with every guest on this show, yeah. um, from the comedy side to the podcast side, everything in between, mm-hmm. what fuels you to keep doing what you do? That's a great question. Uh, especially now with kids, because, you know, uh, comedy does not, pay huge amounts of money at times. Um, I don't know, man. I have, like, just, I just keep on, I try, my wife and I talk about this. I'm trying to put my finger on it. There's, like, like or times where I'm like, oh, should I, I give this up? But I, I can't put doing away. I can't put away wanting the urge to be in front of people. Yeah. So there's something intrinsic there. With the podcasting thing, it's a little bit more clear. Mm-hmm. And the fact of, like, what we're doing right now, getting to know each other, talking like this, you know, like I enjoy this. Like I enjoy this natural aspect about this. Like agreed not to, you know, but like we'll end this and I'll be like, Oh, I, I, you know, I got to meet Dustin and Jeff. Like if we run into each other, we have that commonality from that and stuff like that. I enjoy the communal experience of that. Um, so that's what I think the podcast is kind of giving that the, the sensitivity to that. And then the fact that it is kind of performative in a sense. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's something that with doing comedy and getting up in front of people and trying to make them laugh, there's something gratifying for me and, and I guess whatever my need of it for attention is, but also to um, bring some joy to people, I think, and, and not to sound too self-serious, but uh, to make them laugh for a night, that sound, that's that's appealing as well to make, for lack of a better term, make people happy, but not in the sense of pleasing them, but okay. just joyful. Of course. And I think, you know, I think you said that you've been thinking a lot on it. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think if you're doing something that just the sheer thought of it, I could never give up performing on stage is exactly what you said. Then never give it up, man. Yeah. Never get off that stage. Die on that stage. Yeah. Like I mean, don't do that. Don't do, don't do that. But I, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like I mean, right. if there's that in, in inherent love of it, right. I think like that's all you need. That's all. You, that's that's all anybody needs. Like I think that's 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 the fuel for anybody's fire. Right. And it sure. also makes it. <clears throat> excuse me. I, it also makes it a lot more entertaining when you see somebody up there doing the thing that they love doing, even if they're not particularly good at it. You can tell. Yeah. You can tell that they love doing yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. even more so. You can tell when they don't love doing it. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's 
It sucks. That's the hard part. Yeah. 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 Someone gets bitter. That's the tough part. That's that's I think the now the thing is just reminding yourself because it's about tenacity uh, and just and, and constantly and like I said being like kind of indestructible about it. It's like you know being like the the cockroach of in a positive sense of being indestructible like that. Um, I think that yeah the the I think the one thing is keeping your bitterness or your ego in check on stuff as you stay along with it uh, and yeah. go. I think that's the one thing that sometimes. Uh, this is uh, sorry if it's getting serious, but where it creeps up where you have to be like, Oh, this person has this success. We used to work together. I'm still here. Um, and, and letting that comparison kind of screw with you. That's, that's the problem. That's the struggle as you get older and keep going with it. If you can keep that at bay and if you have a support system that can keep that at bay for you, I think then that like your career is where you are and what you enjoy doing, as you just said, Dustin, you know? Yeah. yeah. And what I think one of the big paths to success is not living in relativity of others. Exactly. You cannot, it will slow you down 100% of the time. For sure. Yeah. It's, uh, I, 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 I talk with someone and, uh, it's, uh, I, I do this crazy thing. It's called the Alexander technique. It's, uh, kind of, kind of keeps your alignment, your body good. It's, it's, uh, a lot of actors use it. I used to do it in college. I walked away from it. And then everything that's gone on with my life, I decided to kind of get back into it. And it really kind of keeps me in check. And one of the things we talk a lot with that is that like, there's a bar that can like slam down on you and be like, I'm not on this side of the bar. I'm below here. Everybody else is over on that side. I got to kind of go up there. And it's like trying to get that bar to get out of your life and not let it gauge where you are to just kind of like live it, you Mm -hmm. know, because we're, we're all, it's all just perspective. And that's the part of like getting stuck in it is like letting your perspective become someone else's. You're just you're you're screwed, you know, with with that with, to keep going that way. Yeah, totally. absolutely. Totally. That's the best answer. One of the best answers we've ever heard for sure. <laughs> Amen. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah. No, it's been such a pleasure talking with you and um, for our listeners and viewers. And I'll put this in the show as well. Mm. Let's start with the podcast. Where can we yep. find BossCast? Oh, you can find it on uh, on on Apple uh, on Apple Podcasts, and you can find it on uh, www.brainmachinenetwork.com uh, slash bosscast. Okay, and then it's on um, what's the other one? I, I'm this is how ignorant Lisby. What's that one? Is that uh, it? Guys? Libsyn. Libsyn. Yeah, Libsyn, it's on yeah. there as well. As yes, thank you. Yep. Yeah, that's where we what we use as well. And um, for fans of you what's the best way to follow you do, um are do you social media do you yeah do you website? you can follow me on at the john murray okay. on uh, on twitter or you can follow me on at uh at bosscast jm mm-hmm. on instagram and twitter and i'd say follow me on the bosscast right now because i'm tweeting more on, on that than as myself i'm finding that's an easier thing to tweet on <laughs> i'm like dumping my heart out more on that one than i am in my real one so um yeah follow that one if you can because uh I'm having a lot of fun with that. Just it's because I can just talk boss the entire time on that, and it's just I feel like uh, it's bringing out like fun posts. Excellent, excellent. And um, are you still active with UCB? Yeah, man. I perform every Saturday at nine uh, with an improv team called Goat, and yeah, we we do long form. Uh, it's about an hour show. Yeah, swing on by. Excellent. And so probably get something else going. I'll get another sketch show or something going. Well, we'll have a. We'll have all those links uh, all in our show for all of our watchers and and listeners as well. And again, I can't thank you enough for taking time to talk with us. And uh, good luck with the podcast and everything you're doing because it all sounds incredible and awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. This has been great. I mean, I looked up, if I could take a second, look up you guys' stuff and listen to some shows. You guys got a great show. You get amazing guests. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, We're working I mean, hard. Steve Jiggle from the Buzzcocks. We're like, that's insane. Yeah, <laughs> that was, dude. <laughs> that was that was insane because not only did we have a, a, an opportunity to sit down with Steve and talk to him about the early days of the Buzzcocks. Yeah. But he was about four or five jalapeno um, mojitos. mojitos deep. Oh my god. And uh, so so that 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 interview turned into a night of just hanging out with him, which was which was crazy. Yeah. He he brought us down. There there, there was a casino casino on the boat and he was like he told us where to get the jalapeno mojitos we met him at that bar right. he dragged us in the casino so he could tell us stories and chain smoke for like two hours was, that's amazing it was amazing that's, that's the first show i saw in new york city oh my gosh wow. really wow. first show when i moved to new york was i saw the buzzcocks it was great that is a hell of a show to kick off new york city it was great yeah it was great. awesome awesome man um well again thank you so much This has been Fueled by Deathcast, a Death Wish Coffee Company podcast production. 
Thanks for listening.